So from here, the golem would have to go through one door, two doors, three doors, eleven doors, fourteen doors, nineteen doors, twenty doors, thirty doors, thirty-one doors, thirty-two doors, thirty-seven doors, thirty-eight doors, and thirty-nine doors, and that is just lovely. And now we're going to do what is called a dick fucking move. So we're gonna place a stair right here, like so. Boom. Blocked. Impassable. Can't get through. Wolf can jump. Golem can't jump. So the golem is fucked. The golem now has one way to go, and it is here. Alright, so first we're going to choose a base location. I've gone ahead and chosen this one right here, because it's very defensible and centered right in the middle of the map. What you want to look for, an area with only one entrance, as you can see here and then a long path to wherever you place the heart, which for me is going to be right here. So this base is ideal because there's a long path and the base is in, the heart is in the back. This one would also work quite well because you have a single entrance and then you can place your heart far back here. The same goes for this location down here and any other location with a single entrance and then you can place your heart in the back. Alright, so here we are in a shit little base. We've made the basics, we have some materials and now the first thing you want to do before making proper rooms is make a new floor. The reason we do this now and not later is simply because it doesn't take much time and we'll save a lot of time later when we don't have to move anything. And when doing this it's important to place your stairs as far back as possible to make it more difficult to reach them for raiders in the future. Alright, so here we are at the, at the third floor and the reason we're doing this is because this is where we're going to put all our production, right here on the third floor. Everything else is going to be for defense. Yeah, even the second floor is going to be for defense. You'll see. The defensibility of this floor doesn't really matter as if the defenders like if the attackers reach this point, then they will definitely bring a key with them. So do whatever you want. I'm going to skip out on making any production rooms, but you get the idea. This is where you make the production. It is important to never leave any palisade walls anywhere in, in your castle, because palisades can be blown up instantaneously with explosives, which will put the castle into breach. It is worth noting that in this particular area, we actually have a big area here that we don't mind if the enemy get it, gets into so this area. You can do whatever you want with decorative garden or whatever, it doesn't matter. We also want to use only doors all over because we can walk through them and they can't. This gives us massive mobility advantage. And we're also going to place our servants right here by the entrance. And this is because we want to protect ourselves against the first, first bridge as much as possible. Second the rear bridges don't matter so much, it's only the first one that matters. This is because the first time they try to bridge a wall, the, only the golem can damage the wall. And the wall will take a quarter of the damage it does after the bridge has been initiated. Which means the first wall is much, much more difficult to get through, so defend it at all costs. We also want to keep in mind to use doors whenever it's a possibility for us to jump outside and flank the enemy. Which is why I'm placing windows here, where it doesn't matter, and doors here, where we can go outside and jump down and ambush our attackers. We also want to make sure to only use servant locked doors because we do not want the servants to be opening a way into the castle. I've used that to shiz the raid on uh, defenseless players, like even outside of raid hours. You do not want the enemy to gain access like that. Now that we're done placing the initial doors here, for this room where we will be fighting any golems, we're going to be a bit clever. So what we are going to do is we're going to look at whatever what path can the golem take to the stairs over here, because we know the golem wants to go from here, somewhere, to the stairs over here. And how can we make this as much of a pain as possible? So one easy choice is to just honeycomb everything, place doors, 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 doors. But what we, we want to do is we want to look at the shortest path it could possibly take, which would be from here, and then going like this, into there. And we're gonna be dicks. We're gonna do this, and we're gonna place stairs, because stairs cannot be broken, in such a way that we maximize how far the golem has to go. So now the golem can't the golem can't go anywhere from up here. The golem can't jump down. So now the golem's shortest path is suddenly through here instead, which is a longer path. Now we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna check what is the shortest path the golem can take. Could be this one through the servants, or it could be this one. I think they're both fairly similar. And so we're going to do the same thing again. Now if the golem wants to go here. It's suddenly going to have to go here, and I did right or left, obviously left, because this is shorter, so the golem's going to go here. I think this might be better. This is not an obvious process, you have to really think about it. If the golem goes here, then if we place stairs here, 
suddenly massive roadblock and now the shortest path the golem can take it comes here so it goes like this and here and left or right doesn't really matter and it's going in here and if possible of course we can do um use to orient the stairs such that the entrance to the stairs is towards the inner portions of the base as you can see here it is now first of all the golem doesn't really know the layout of this so they don't know where the shortest path is but the shortest path we know that they can either go here so the shorter, shortest is definitely through the servants right now. And this may not be the optimal stair placement, by the way. Really, you gotta you gotta think about this when you when you make it, because it, it, it is not obvious or easy. Speaking of, I think I can actually be a bit more clever here. If I do this instead, could be wrong. Now I realize that I made that path just as short as it was at the beginning. So I'm going to move this stair back, because that was dumb. And now it is once again longer. We can consider if this stair could be placed better. So that is what I'm going to do. I think this. Yes, this is much better. And now if they want to go here, they have to go through here, here, and in there, which is quite a bit longer. And if they want to go through the servants, suddenly they have to make an extra turn. And they have to turn here and then turn back down. Or they can go through here and turn back up. So they have to walk further. Which is perfect. And now the final step is simply to place doors absolutely everywhere. And so in the end we're going to end up with an absolute massive pain of a clusterfuck. Of course, traversing this might look might seem like a pain for you as well, but you can just use a teleporter. Yes, yeah, so if you get up on this one, a player, a vampire, can get up here, though a golem cannot. Since players can break things within bridge, you still want to wall, wall off the stairs as much as you can. And now you can notice we can see the stairs like this from above. These stairs are the reason we didn't build on the second flo floor with our production, and why we only built on the third because these stairs would have reached the second all the time and it would have been a massive pain. But we can also, from the third floor, which is going to be above all of this, jump down onto the stairs and thus reposition much better than any attackers, which gives us a serious advantage in terms of mobility. And now we simply repeat the process for higher floors. Right, so we do the same thing for this floor. We look what is the shortest path to the castle heart and we can see that you obviously want to take this turn to the side here and so we're going to say fuck you to anyone who thinks to take the turn to the side there also we don't even have to wall this off actually because the golem can't get through here so the golem's kind of fucked on that one nope you can't go through that way bit of a bug perfect for our purposes so i think this is probably a solid start. Now, we just made a choke point, which is ideal for defenders, as they can stand on the stairs as well. There's one final little clever stair we can do that will really ruin the golem's day, and that is this stair right here. Such a pain for the golem. Pretty much always want that stair. And we can make a stair here, why not? And there you go. So now, the golem's path went from fairly straightforward to this mess. That is a much longer path than we started with. So you can see clever stair placement makes bases much, much more annoying to raid. Though again, you still want to defend the first bridge more than anything else, because that is what matters the most. Simply place doors, 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 and that is everything that you need. And again, we have these spots you can jump down on from higher floors in order to get behind the golem and surprise them. Assuming they can somehow find the optimal path through this mess, I can't find it and I can see everything. One door, two doors, three doors, four doors, five doors, six doors, seven doors, eight doors, nine doors, ten doors, eleven doors, twelve doors, thirteen doors, fourteen doors, fifteen doors, sixteen doors, seventeen doors, eighteen doors, nineteen doors, twenty doors, twenty-one doors, twenty-two doors, twenty-three doors, twenty-four doors, twenty-five doors, twenty-six doors, twenty-seven doors, twenty-eight doors, twenty-nine doors, thirty doors, thirty-one doors, thirty-two doors, thirty-three doors, thirty-four doors, thirty-five doors, thirty-six doors, thirty-seven doors, thirty-eight doors, and thirty-nine doors, and that is just lovely. So again, as stated, any golem that makes it to the heart through the fucking doors is going to have a key for you. So thus it doesn't matter if you place the fences up here. All you have to do is just build whatever you want. Make a nice garden. You have over 200 tiles left here. That's plenty. Just make sure that you have 
little holes like so, so that you can jump down onto the stairs below. So all you do is simply go up here and then you jump down and now you are behind the golem and you can outflank them in whatever way you want. Make sure that we have a coffin room. The purpose of a coffin room is to give your, your team a place to respawn and re-equip quickly if you're down. In full loot servers this means you have all have a chest with consumables and backup gear kit ready to go. In regular PvP it means you still have the consumables but instead you have repair materials. So what you do is you simply place a container for everyone in the clan. So I'm going to take that coffin and I'm going to name this after myself. And then in here I place consumables, healing potions, buff potions, repair materials, extra weapons, whatever I need. Always lots of healing potions because you will need them. And from here, when you respawn, you can simply jump down a floor if you're under attack. Or if you're not, you can just use a teleporter. And this is what we'll be using every time we actually want to go anywhere in our castle. No sane person would actually walk through all of this. For servant types, you want to go something that can support you. Any Silverlight mobs are kind of good. Clerics are especially good because they can heal you. But there's a trick that attackers can use. They can use explosives on your servants, which will kill them in about two or three explosives. They can simply set them up up here and bait you in with the explosions. You want to be aware of that. Let them out to delay when needed. You probably noticed at this point that we have created a lot of artificial choke points, which would be absolutely ideal if we wanted to do banshees, say here, which was which is where I'm going to place it. Because if a player jumps across here and takes out this door, the golem can't, but a player can. Then what they will find is a lovely little banshee room. Now this isn't the max size of banshees, but I think the fact that they have to go through it either through this choke point here, which means extra doors as well or here where they have pretty much nowhere to run. So now you might be thinking, but Ronan, how do I get through the Banshee room? I don't want to die to Banshees, that would be embarrassing. So there's a few ways to do this. One of them is the risky way. Just simply sneaking through. However, if you are a sane person, you do not like to live with the constant threat of death, you can simply use a teleporter. And in the event of a siege, where you need to get past and your teleporter has been disabled, you can either jump down, or you can use your way gate. We don't place doors down here. There's also nothing stopping us from doing something like this, just to taunt whoever is standing outside. Is it? You cannot attack from up here. You can jump down. Now, as a defender, it is actually quite quick to kill a golem zone. You, perhaps 20 seconds a single player can do it in, which isn't a lot and can save you a bit but a lot of pain so you can use one of these doors over here to jump down if the enemy is distracted it's not super easy but it's totally doable so as a, as a defender what you'll want to be doing <laughs> is you'll want to stand up here and you want to try and drag in your enemy so that you can combo them with your team and to prevent the enemy from doing the same to you you simply do this and fish with the spear and if you manage to get anyone well just close the door and there you go they are dead and these are the abilities of course Yeah, you see that range? I can hit from down here. And that is why I place the door so far back. You can, the golem can stand here and hit all the way back there. You can even place it further back. But a golem standing here is vulnerable to the defenders, who of course stand up here, with their lightning curtain. So the golem can't do this because there is a lightning curtain permanently there. The defenders could also have death knight with the summon skill and mage jewel which is high DPS and super simple to use. Or maybe a mosquito. But if if the defenders be dumb enough to have a door down here, at the bottom of the stairs, the golem could do this. Stand way the fuck over here, way away from any defenders, and hit all the way over here. So that's why you don't place a door right there. Finally, as a defender, it is simply your goal to kill the golem. If they do not have a golem, then they cannot win. Once they actually do manage to bridge, the golem doesn't matter nearly as much anymore because any player can simply break down walls with their weapons. But for this first bridge setup, you'll definitely want to target the golem as much as possible. Which is why it can be a valid strategy to go outside and kill the golem stone before it manages to get up. So here we are in our freshly built honeycombed castle. And now we're going to do what is called a dick fucking move. So we're gonna place a stair right here, like so. Boom. Blocked. The thing is, a player and a golem can still walk through here, so we're also going to... Boom. Impassable. Can't get through. A wolf can jump. A golem can't jump. So the golem is fucked. The golem now has one way to go, and it is here. It is important that you do not place a wall here, as the golem can actually hit it from over here. 
up here we do the exact same thing but here you do want to place a wall there so otherwise the player might be able to jump in there however there is one way to do the defense better what we're going to do is demolish a bunch of these walls in order to force the golem to go up the stairs to us where we can mid it at our turn so now that we don't have doors down here the golem can't hit them because they don't exist and the golem has to walk all the way up here can't can't hit here there's nothing to it has to walk all the way up here and if it if this is the safest range it can hit from if it wants to go up in melee then it has to walk all the way up here where of course we have our servants in this lovely little box any golem that stands here remember the defenders could easily be on the stairs so they could come from the doors behind here or just from the servant room or just let the servants out this is not a good place for golem to be finally it is extremely important that you fight with a 90% drop of blood, and in the case of sieges, that you only ever use scholar or warrior blood. You also want to make sure that you keep a chest with repair materials at hand, because if a golem manages to bridge and the attackers blow up a bunch of walls, then you'll want to be able to rebuild as fast as possible once you fend them off, before they come back. It is also the case that if they manage to damage some of these doors here, the outer doors, then the doors will not heal on their own, not fast at least. So you'll want to remove the doors and replace them with fresh ones with full HP. Because otherwise, the next time they come with a golem, 5 minutes later, it's going to be much easier for them to bridge. However, you have to be aware that within about 10 seconds, I believe, of you placing a new door or wall, that wall can be instantaneously broken with a single attack from even a normal sword swing or anything. Now here are some spells to gain extra value in sieges, not necessarily better than other spells, but worth considering. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe for more, and let me know in the comments below what topic you'd like me to cover next.